Hello everybody, this is Tim here again, here at another movie review. This one's a little late. This movie's been out for a while now, but I just recently got to see it. Uh, a Quiet Place 2. Now, A Quiet Place 1, if you haven't seen my review, I liked A Quiet Place 1. I rate my movies from 1 to 4 stars, but I didn't love it. I felt like the ending was a little weak, a little too sequel bait. Um, but I would, I still enjoyed it. I liked it overall. I'd give it a 3 out of 4. I liked it. I wanted a little bit more information on the creatures, but overall... I liked it. I thought it was fine. Some of the writing for the kids, though, was kind of stupid. Um, and the parents and how they parented. That was my big complaint about that first one. Is, like, the way the parents just left, like, the littlest kid in the main back. That was really retarded. Um, but above all, though, I did enjoy the movie as a whole. Now, Quiet Place 2. Directed by John Krasinski, again, who also directed and starred in the first one. He's, he's back directing here. He's even in the beginning of the movie. Uh, which is kind of a semi-prequel, like part of the first act is, where it shows when everything started. That was pretty cool. Um, they set up Killian Murphy's character in here. He's pretty much the John Krasinski replacement, but he's not like a copy of his character or anything. But he's obviously there to be like the new main like male lead or whatever, and he does a great job. I like Killian Murphy in here a lot. Um, maybe even more than John Krasinski from the first film. But yeah, and he had a much, well, he had a much more interesting arc. Um, but yeah, to jump into the movie, the beginning of it, you get like this meteorite, like asteroid type crash. And that's kind of like alluding to maybe the creatures are from like outer space or whatever. They really never specify, I don't think, whether they're from space or not. I mean, eventually, of course, when they get to Quiet Place 3, Quiet Place 4, Quiet Place 5, 10, whatever, they'll eventually reveal the creature's origins. There might be some kind of government experiment going wrong, some population control thing or something. Who knows? But until then, it looks like they are probably from space, that they just crash landed as some organism from a meteorite or something. As these movies get more money with each sequel, because each one outgrosses the last, they'll start having more money for special effects and start explaining more of the creature's backstory. Maybe eventually we'll get like a planet of these things or whatever and show where they're from. Who knows? But as far as it goes here, it seems like they're just from like a random asteroid. Honestly, I'm fine with that, like a meteorite or asteroid impact thing. I don't really need anything more than that. Just the idea that they're an animal from space, that's fine with me. Um, this is a B-movie creature feature, just like the first one. Um, but pretty much after that, after the opening, it picks up directly from the ending of the last one. You got Emily Blunt and her family who just kind of leave the house. I wasn't really sure why they left their house. I guess it's because they just wanted to take off because the place was flooding, I guess. They didn't even really try to fix it. I don't know exactly why they left. Um, maybe they couldn't live there anymore because things got destroyed and all that from the last movie. I'm not for sure, but they take off. They go to Killian Murphy's place, who he was shown at the beginning of the movie in the flashback prequel part, which you knew he was coming back, and he shows up with like a thing over his face to where you can't see him. And But you know it's him. If you know anything about movies, he's too popular of an actor and too well-known that when you see him at the beginning, you know he's coming back. And when you hear his voice, you're like, that's Killian Murphy. It's obvious. And he reveals himself. He's pretty much turned into a survivalist since, like, his wife and kid have, like, died or whatever. And I actually think his wife may be still alive or his son, maybe. And they're, like, burn up. And I think he's keeping them, like, on an IV thing. I believe that's what it was in the movie. It's only shown for, like, a brief second. But, yeah. And so the daughter wants to, like, take off to this thing she hears on the radio on, uh, beyond the sea or whatever. And it's actually, like, a code to, like, a place where these people are living on an island. That's because the creatures can't swim. They can't get through the water. But eventually one of them does get there by random accident by drifting on a boat, which was a little coincidental, but I was okay with it. Um, this goes a different route than the first one because they got more money. This one has more action in it. There's much more just, like, talking. This one was more, slightly more mainstream than the first one. Um, but I will say overall, I like this one slightly better than the first one. I gave the first one three. I would give this one a four. I thought this was a great sequel that goes pretty much the aliens route by being more action packed. I really enjoyed this one. Didn't love it, but I really liked it and we'll definitely pick it up on Blu-ray and DVD. So pretty much the girl, the death girl from the last one, she's taking her dad's place, which I like that idea with this movie, how it's supposed to like bring the kids into their own and have them actually have a character arc where they finally start taking care of their family and helping out more. And uh, the girl takes off on her own to try to find the place so she can broadcast or whatever the sound to hurt these creatures that was used in the, la the ending of the last movie. And Emily Blunt, which she doesn't get as much to do here as I thought she would, like, the movie pretty much splits off, but the main story is, like, she sends Killian Murphy out to, like, find her daughter and take her on a quest, pretty much, to use this device to hurt these creatures, and that's what they end up doing, which, that was by far the way more interesting part of the movie 
like Emily Blunt just stays back with her kid for most of the movie. I was actually surprised about that. I expected her to be like the main star, but really it's the death girl and Killian Murphy's movie. I mean, the, the the son, he gets hurt in a bear trap, like a booby trap that somebody had out. I think it was Killian Murphy had it out for the creatures just in case they came by. And he gets hurt in that, and he pretty much spends the whole rest of the movie hurt, and Emily Blunt has to, like, go out to get some medicine for him to help him out. And stupidly, he goes out and starts, like, going around and um, just looking around for no reason. That's one of the problems I had with it. The son character here is really useless. He does get some, like, scenes to redeem himself when he's, like, helping save the baby by using the oxygen mask on his face and, like, using it on the baby at the same time because he's locked himself up in this little chamber or whatever that Killian Murphy had in the place he was staying in to hide from the creature that he alerts because he's snooping around the place when he's not supposed to be. So, yeah, that was really annoying. They had the some retarded children riding in the last one as well, and parent riding in the last one as well, when they, like, left the littlest kid in the main back with a by himself, which made no sense. No real parent would do that. I'm sorry. I know some people will try to make excuses, like, such and such, but no real parent in this situation would do that with their kid. Like, if I was in this situation, I'd try to do that with my kid. My wife would walk up to me and, like, bitch smack me and say, get the son. Because he's the youngest. Like, he wouldn't even be with us. He would, like, stay behind, like, locked up somewhere. Or the dad, me, would be out on his own to collect whatever medicine he needed. Like, and that's what realistically would have happened in that first movie. But I was willing to let it go a little bit in the first one because they needed to set that up to have some kind of dra more dramaticness to the story or whatever and for what they were going for. Here, it's just the son being stupid again. Or another kid being stupid. But uh, it makes for a good action scene, and uh, it has a nice parallel to the uh, the daughter or whatever who's becoming like the father. And Emily Blunt comes back. He she like has a pretty cool action scene, well shot, well directed. This movie's directed good, just like the last one. John Krasinski does a good job here. Um, he saves. Um, or she like knocks. I mean, Emily Blunt knocks out, knocks this water thing out or whatever, and it's like pouring everywhere, and the creatures can't hear over the water. Pretty cool action scene. And she gets down there with the son, and the daughter eventually manages to like broadcast the thing over the radio, and um, it disables the creatures. And she or the son manages to get Emily Blunt's gun and like shoots it in the head to redeem him, redeem his own stupidity. And the daughter, like where she's at with Killian Murphy, because they make it to this island that's like a safe zone because it's surrounded by water because these creatures can't swim, even though one of them actually floats there on a boat, which was pretty pretty coincidental. But I was willing to let that go because I was really into this one by then. And um, but um, he, he, they kill the last. The, only one creature manages to make it to the island, but you got this actor there, like Demon Houston, or I, I, I don't know how you pronounce the guy's name. He's from Guardians of the Galaxy. If you've seen it, the dude that goes, where Chris Pratt goes Star Lord, and he goes, "Who? I have a, I've always had a hard time pronouncing this guy's name. Sometimes I remember how to do it, and other times I just completely forget. But he's a pretty well known actor, and he's a good actor, and he shows up and he does a good job. And talking to Killian Murphy and stuff about this is safe zone and everybody took off to the islands and some of the boats got took out because the creatures got on it because I was making too much noise. But um, they've been living there for years apparently. But he gets took out very stupidly. Like I have no reason why they killed him. I have no idea why they killed him off. And I know somebody's going to say, well, it's because he's black, he's expendable. But no, I don't think John Krasinski would do that. I, it just felt to me like they wanted like an extra death and they needed to kill off at least one more character because they wanted to, they want to keep some of these characters or most of these characters around for the next one because there's already been a third one announced. This movie made a crap lot of money. So he just dies like really stupidly because they take off in a vehicle and he's like helping him out and he hides his kid and they hide this other kid or whatever that Killian Murphy saves and um, they take off to go broadcast the thing at the radio tower or whatever. And, uh, he just stands there like right in front of the garage door and it opens. He's like, maybe we lost the creature. And it just reaches, you know, what's going to happen. It reaches under the doorway and grabs him and pulls him out through there and kills him. That was really lame. That brought them. I was really enjoying this movie much more than the first one for the cool action of seeing this creature run around like a suburban type environment, you know, at the end. But when he got took out, that was really lazy. They shouldn't have done that. He should have lived. Or he should have, like, done some kind of self-sacrifice thing or something. But he shouldn't have been took out like that. That was lazy. This movie was better than that. And another, another one other problem I had, like, the only other, like, real problem I had is, like, these people show up where they got, like, on the, the boat dock or whatever where Killian Murphy and the, the girl is there to, like, get a boat so they can go off to try to find where the beyond-the-sea thing is being broadcast from. And 
there's like this little girl there and it's like a trap for Killian Murphy and he gets like hung around the neck and these dudes show up there and they're like taking the, the death girl off or whatever. And I don't know if they were going to eat him, rape her, rape her, then eat her. I don't really get like what these guys were going to do. Like I like the, I like the idea that they're world building because this is like a post-apocalyptic world. But they never really explain what the hell these guys are going to do. I, I I mean, obviously, we know that's something bad. But I would have liked, the, I mean, if you're going to world build, I would have liked a little bit more information, honestly. Um, we're just left to assume, you, as the audience, like the director is just saying, you've seen a lot of these post-apocalyptic movies. You know they're going to rape her or they're going to kill her or both. So, you, you know it's not good. So, whatever. And it was a pretty good action scene where Killian Murphy, like, makes a big loud noise and the creatures show up and start killing everybody. And he makes the, the girl, like, jump in the water and stuff. And he jumps in the water. Pretty cool. Uh, the movie ends with Killian Murphy and the girl and stuff still being alive. And then the other family members with Emily Blunt, the baby and uh, the son are still alive at Killian Murphy's place. And you get the idea they're going to do the third one where they, like, go to rescue Emily Blunt and all that. And they're all going to meet up. And probably go to this island safe zone or whatever. And that'll be like maybe the conclusion for the third movie. Or they're going to go even more epic and have them like take the creatures out somehow or something. Or maybe since they got a dead one. Maybe they got a somebody there on the island who can study the creatures by bio, biology or something. And determine more weaknesses for them or something. Who knows. But yeah. All in all. It does end on a, a, a sudden cliffhanger that's just there to kind of leave you hanging, almost like a TV episode to set you up for another one. That almost made me knock the movie down to like three and a half, but then I started thinking, well, they know they're getting another movie because they know that this first one did well. They know they have an audience, so I was willing to let it slide because I was entertained. So I wanted to give this one a break, and all in all, um, even though the ending is a little sudden and a, a little too sudden, I would give it a four out of four. For what it is as a B movie, this is a great sequel. Um, and I like it more than the first one because it's more action packed. It's got more going on, even though it is a little bit more mainstream. Uh, but yeah, I'd give it a four out of four. I really enjoyed it. I'm excited to see what they do for part three. Um, hopefully they won't like go too much into the origin of the creatures for like a part three or a part four. And I know they're going to be really tempted to stretch this out for way more movies than it needs to be. I'm fine with just stopping at a part three and just killing the creatures and being done with it, like reclaiming civilization or whatever. I'm fine with that. I don't need like a quiet place five or six or whatever. I don't or four. Three is enough. Sometimes it's okay just to end it. Or the Purge movie should have ended at number three. Uh, lots of franchises should have ended. Some of them it's okay to keep going like Friday the 13th just because they're fun. But a lot of them really do need to just end. And I, I really do hope the third one is kind of the last one. Even though I know it's probably not going to be. But yeah, all in all, I'd give this a 4 out of 4. I really enjoyed it. If you like the first one, I see no reason why you shouldn't enjoy this. And uh, if you um, hated the first one, I have no idea why you'd even be watching this one. But yeah, all in all, I really liked it. And I think if you enjoyed the first one, you'll have a good time with it. So thank you guys for watching, and I'll see you again.